Welcome to Love Bites. Love Bites. Love Bites. Love Bites. It is quite a, a huge question to tackle. Like, what is great sex? But yeah. we have talked about um, the mindfulness, sexual mindfulness stuff. About learning about your body, your preferences, your likes and dislikes, and start practicing uh, mindful um, practices. So, yeah, what are masturbation? Mindful masturbation is a good place to start and practice. Yeah, yes, yes. I had a an episode about that. So, hey, loves, definitely listen to that episode on uh, mindful masturbation. Awesome. Uh, And then we talked about. What is great sex? Great sex is also involved the ability to communicate with your partner. So as you were describing all of that, one thing that you said was about the desire uh, discrepancy. um, Yeah. Related to like the issues, like how do we communicate sexual issues or our preferences or things that we perhaps like or didn't like that our partner did? Yeah. Um, And a lot of times when I educate my students, I always talk about, you know, have so much empathy as you talk about things you didn't like, because sex is such like a vulnerable, like insecure, like based topic where if you said maybe some things in a harsh way, it could yeah. stay with that person a long time. Yes. Right? So one of the questions that I typically get on my TikTok uh, is like, how do I talk to them? Like, you know, how do I talk to her? How do I talk to them? Yeah. So I mean, there's two different approaches. One is when you're in the moment, if somebody's doing something that doesn't feel like quite right for you, or you want them to do something different, maybe it's just to gently guide their hand. Mm-hmm. Or gently move them, or be like, "Hey, can I shift a little bit? That feels a little uncomfortable to me." Mm-hmm. You know, you just take ownership because it is. It's right. It's showing up. It's showing up to you in a way um, that's not what you're looking for. So mm-hmm. just you know, and and the more normal that is, the happier. I mean, because you don't want anybody who's like just enduring pain or is is isn't getting pleasure or isn't right. happy, but keeps going along with it because right. they don't want to disrupt their partner. So, yeah. you know, just in the moment, gently give, and if that's not saying you're doing this wrong or no. out, stop that or something and be like, Oh, Hey, can we shift? Um, and I, and I think one thing to know is too, what worked last week may not work this week. Mm-hmm. Our bodies are always changing mm-hmm. and women with menstrual cycles and shifting and that are literally, you know, our uterus and our cervix can shift throughout right. the month. Yeah. Um, you know, how tired you are, how hydrated you are, how well you <laughs> ate, how stressed you are, how distracted you are. All of these things impact mm-hmm. how much we can drop into a sexual moment or not. So just know like there's nothing there's nothing wrong with you. And there's nothing broken with mm-hmm. you. It's just, if it can always be an or, or organic exchange. Mm-hmm. And then otherwise, I always tell people, use me as your excuse. Then yes. over like breakfast one morning or over, you know, a happy hour or something, be like, hey, I was listening to this podcast or I read this book or I read this article or my friend sent this thing to me and um, it was about this topic. Uh-huh. <laughs> you know? And so instead of talking about what's not working, talk about how you want to shift things like in a positive way, you know? So, um, because it's hard for us to not get defensive. If our Mm -hmm. partner is telling us like you suck or right. Right. Well, you're really bad at giving head. I know. (laughs) I've know. i been doing all this work for this long. (laughs) I know exactly. And then you feel there's so many levels of embarrassment and then it's just hard to want to show up again and try it again. So instead saying, Hey, I was reading this thing. I didn't even know this was a thing or did it. Can we try try? this? Yes. It's perfect. (laughs) I mean, and it's genuine. So it's like framing it in the positive and framing it as a team together Mm -hmm. instead of finger pointing, Mm -hmm. you know, so you take ownership of like, Hey, I'd love this. Can Mm -hmm. we try this together? Mm -hmm. Um, So there's no, you know, blaming or shaming involved, Mm -hmm. but that requires, you know, thinking, you know, and and sometimes I tell folks, you know, if you're afraid you're not going to say it right, put it in a text. Put it, you yes. know, put it in, in yeah. you know, where you get to think about it. And then your partner also gets to reflect on it and not feel put on the spot. Mm-hmm. So we're send an article, you know, be like, I was reading this thing and this is like, can we talk about this? I'm, yeah. I, you know, we don't have to do it, but I'm, I'm curious to at least talk about it. I love that advice. I love that advice. Um, another barrier to great sex that uh, a lot of my followers have told me is the, 
lack of sexual initiation mm. from one partner in a relationship. Yeah. What do you think about that? Yeah. So, I mean, that falls in line with one of my special theories of, of couples with mismatched desire levels yeah. in a term relationship. Yeah. So it can be hard for the lower desire person to initiate anything sexual because they're not feeling sexual, you know, they're not feeling much desire. They're also often can be afraid that if they start something, but then they, their body doesn't kick in or they don't feel like doing it, they're just going to disappoint their partner again or more. So they will maybe avoid initiating that way. There's also can be a lot of shame. You know, if you carry shame or embarrassment around sex that like, you're not going to do it right. Right. So, but then, you know, the, it's then obviously the unfair weight on the person who has higher desire and that's mm -hmm. always initiated. And then they're opening themselves up to be rejected, mm -hmm. which is so vulnerable. And at some point yes. people will just stop trying sometimes, yes. even though they're not happy with it. So, um, I suggest, you know, one of the things I suggest is that couples start using a zero to five rating system. Mm -hmm. I like to, I like to take like abstract concepts and, and boil them down to something, you know, operational. Oh, and you're so, speaking my language. Know, I'm a quantitative researcher. That's why I just said that. I was like, Oh, you're going to appreciate this. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, um, and so that would be like, you know, the one of the people can go to the other part. It doesn't matter higher desire, lower desire and be like, Hey, tonight I was thinking, you know, it's been a little while. I'm, I'm feeling like a, a four out of five, you know, where are you on the scale? And, mm -hmm. and so basically what they're checking, first of all, they have to attune themselves and be like, okay, am I a zero that I want zero touch with mm -hmm. my partner? I don't want anything, but am I like a two where I would like some cuddling and maybe some massage. And if I can relax and get out of my head and get present in my body and we put our cell phones away, I, my body will probably respond and open up. Mm -hmm. Or am I also like a four or a five and like, yeah, game on, hold on. Mm -hmm. Let me put the kids down to sleep or mm -hmm. let me finish this, you know, this paper I'm working on. Mm -hmm. Um, and I'll meet you in a half hour in the bedroom, you know? Yeah. And so, but it's also, it, it's, um, it seems easier for the initiator um, because they're not actually like starting something to get mm -hmm. rejected. They're putting it out there. And then mm -hmm. the lower desire person can check in and be like, okay, wow. Why am I always a zero or a one? Mm -hmm. What what can I do? And what can I do for myself to maybe get myself to a two or a three? Mm -hmm. And maybe they start fantasizing about something sexy or they read some erotica or they pull out their vibrator for a few minutes and just mm -hmm. get their body prime. You know, I call it priming your own pump. And get yourself started. <laughs> and then you could come back to your partner and be like, yeah. And, and you're feeling say, sexy. You're like, yeah. You're like, okay, let's, let's do this. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. And another thing is if you are the person who never initiates and part of it is because you don't know how to do it. I facilitate them. That's one of the things I like to facilitate between couples, like asking the other person, like, how do, how do you want them to initiate? Right. And then sometimes they're like, I, I just grab my crotch, you know, mm -hmm. but otherwise they may be like, Oh, I want, I'd like us to connect a little bit, talk mm -hmm. about our days while mm -hmm. we're maybe holding hands, make, start kissing my neck, start kissing mm -hmm. up to my ear, you know, like they, they want those aspects of it and warming up in that way and connecting. Mm -hmm. Um, which is literally get, because it's easier to initiate when you know what your partner wants. <laughs> mm -hmm. Totally. So like a lot of this to me, like it comes down to the ability to communicate and communication. And communicate clearly and effectively and kindly. Mm -hmm.